Hello, my name's Richard Rawlings and I'm Professor of Public Law here at UCL. And on this occasion I'm going to talk about a subject which I find really interesting, which is European administrative law. And indeed this is the subject on which I've been working uh, in research terms for the last couple of years now. And by the very nature of the course, it really bridges uh, two components of our LLM offerings here at UCL. On the one hand, uh, it's clearly a public law course, and on the other hand, it's also a European Union course. So whether you want to specialise in either of those areas, I'd suggest that EU administrative law is a course that you might want to think about uh, studying. I should also say right at the outset that this course is unique at UCL because it's the only UCL course which we have on our LLM which is jointly taught by the London School of Economics uh, LSE and in fact I co-teach it with a colleague of mine uh, with whom I've uh, researched and written for many many years now Professor Carol Harlow and the seminars that we run on this course, uh, two-hour seminars each week, are jointly taught and uh, they are taught indeed on suitably neutral territory, halfway between UCL and LSE, uh, down at the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies, where of course you'll be spending much of your time anyway uh, using their fine library resources. Now, European Union Administrative Law is focused at different levels of the so-called European construction. So we'll be looking at decision making at the union level itself and in particular they're focusing on the work of the European Commission, the core executive body of the European Union. We'll also be looking at the work of committees and in particular of European agencies which are a very exciting phenomenon, developing phenomenon in EU administrative law. But we'll also be looking at the impact and the operation of EU requirements at member state level. In other words, when member states are following administrative procedures and applying EU norms uh, as they are obliged to do under the treaties and we'll find that there's there a very interesting mix to observe between on the one hand national procedures and national traditions and EU requirements essentially predicated on the idea of constructing a single market. Now as I've indicated the course uh, operates on a weekly seminar basis, uh, two hours and historically it's a very friendly class in which students from both colleges come together, uh, make good friendships, uh, work together uh, and from time to time tease each other about the relative strengths of the two respective colleges. The course is essentially divided into two parts. In the first term we'll be looking at what we might call practical administration. So we'll be looking at the way in which decision making is carried on in the European Union. We'll be looking first to provide students with an overview of the framework as a whole. So we begin by thinking about the purposes of administrative law, reflecting of course on your own experiences, We'll then be looking at the institutional framework of the European Union and we'll be looking at the general principles which the courts in particular in Europe have developed to frame the constitutional and administrative arrangements. And this beginning to the course will give students a general landscape with which to work and for those coming from outside the EU uh, providing 
uh, a, an excellent opportunity to gain a general grasp of the subject before looking more closely at individual topics. Now, at this point, I want to pause and say something about the kinds of students who studied this course over many years. At first sight, you might think that this course is essentially for European students. And of course, we've had many fine European students taking this course, and we greatly value their contribution. But I also really want to emphasize the contribution to the course that students have made who come from outside the European Union. Because after all, there are many reasons these days why students from outside the European Union might want to know and understand how and why the European Union works as it does. It's not simply a question that you may at some point have to deal with European Union institutions wherever you are in the world, but clearly the European Union is the leading model today of what is called regional integration. And what we found, Carol and I, teaching this course over many years, is that students, say, from South America or Southern Africa or Southeast Asia and many other places uh, as well, find this course particularly interesting because of regional developments in their own parts of the globe. And there are many lessons to learn, I think, from Europe about what to do and what not to do uh, when one is thinking about that, those forms of regional integration. Returning then to the actual content of the course, having completed the overview, we then look at particular areas of administrative decision taking and how they are and should be carried on. And this works through a series of case studies, which we call horizontal case studies and vertical case studies. What we mean by horizontal case studies are case studies that go across different areas of activity, government act, governance activity. And we'll be looking at two in particular. The first is rulemaking by the Commission, which immediately raises very interesting questions of participation as a good governance value. And we'll then be looking at a very interesting and controversial topic in EU administration, which is the topic of transparency. And we'll be looking at and studying the regulation on key regulation on transparency in the EU and the case law on that regulation. We'll then be moving on to look at what we call vertical case studies, particular sectors of activity. And here we'll be looking at go uh, government contracting, EU rules uh, which discipline uh, contracting by national governments. We'll be looking at competition law, and we'll also be looking at areas such as regional policy, where the European Union will be seen to have some very interesting and again, highly controversial arrangements for uh, using taxpayers' money uh, to support uh, less well-off regions in the European Union. And naturally that raises some very interesting issues of legal, political, administrative and financial control. One particular aspect of the course that over many years our students have enjoyed is that one of the case studies that we do is very much student-led. We'll be looking at the work of two or three agencies with students being uh, joined into groups and being allowed to make a major presentation on the work and the design of their chosen agency from an administrative law point of view. So this year, for example, or last year rather, we looked at the work of the European Food Safety Agency 
and we looked at the work of Europol, which is the European Policing Authority. The term will end with a no doubt uh, animated discussion about whether the European Union should follow the example, for example, of the United States and create an Administrative Procedure Act of a general nature going across different subject matters. And we'll see that there are current proposals now being debated in Brussels, so we'll be able to engage very directly uh, with what is going on in Brussels. In the second term, we move on to think about issues of legal accountability and redress of grievance in EU administrative law. We begin by looking at questions of enforcement, taking a good look at the work of the Commission in bringing actions against member states for non-compliance with EU requirements, and then focusing down, again choosing a vertical case study, that of competition, to look at the way in which the Commission exercises enforcement powers in that particular area. And that case study is a particularly interesting one, we think, uh, because of the uh, existence, clearly, of multinational corporations and uh, a very strong litigation culture in that particular area. We then go on to look at ideas of alternative dispute resolution, which are fashionable in many parts of the globe now and are increasingly uh, gaining prominence inside the European Union. And here we'll be looking uh, in particular at the work of the European Ombudsman on behalf of European citizens. The last half of the second term will then be devoted, as you might expect, to the contribution of the courts to EU administrative law. And here we'll be looking very much at the grounds of uh, intervention by the courts, focusing on the issue of proportionality, and in particular at the increasing importance of judicial review on grounds of fundamental human rights inside the European Union. And again, we do that in part by case study, uh, looking at a series of very interesting cases involving suspected terrorists. Throughout the course, as I've indicated, students will have lots of chance to participate and naturally the participation tends to increase, opportunities tend to increase as the course proceeds. In terms of literature, there's a good literature on European Union administrative law and in particular there will be two books that we will be using. The first is by Paul Craig entitled EU Administrative Law, which is a standard work on the subject. And then secondly, uh, the teacher's own book, Process and Procedure in EU Administration, which will be published in November 2014 by Hart Publishing in Oxford. And naturally, as soon as that book becomes available, uh, students will be made aware of it. Uh, should there be a little bit of delay in producing that book, then of course the teachers will make uh, electronic copies of the relevant chapters available for students to use in the early part of the course. In addition, uh, we have a particular emphasis in this course on the use of electronic resources, uh, which the Commission in particular is very good indeed. Turning to the examination, uh, the examination is a uh, typical three-hour examination at the end of the course and we take great care to make sure that whatever your educational background or particular writing style, uh, that will be accommodated uh, in the course scheme. Throughout the course, uh, you will also have the opportunity to write a couple of essays 
and they will be marked in suitably friendly and frank fashion and feedback will be received. So to sum up, this course is a determinedly participative one where students are encouraged to express their views and work together. It's what I think is a very exciting course which is fast moving and drawing on a wide variety of sources. And I also think it's great fun because we get to mix not just between ourselves as members of the UCL faculty, but also with members of the LSE faculty, which is uh, a great pleasure indeed. Thank you.